Well, howdy, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Stock Show Confidential. I'm Terry Jordan. This week, we're in San Angelo, Texas, for one of the toughest goat show anywhere in the country. Stay tuned. It's going to be a great one. The San Angelo Stock Show and Rodeo started back in 1931. And since then, the stock show has grown to become one of the largest goat and lamb shows in the country. The event features over 40 different contests, competitions, and events for youth and open exhibitors. With this many top animals in the barn, it didn't take us long to find a pioneer in the industry. I'd like to introduce you to Mike Harbor. Now, Mike, you guys have had tremendous success, both in the goat barn and the lamb barn. Last year, obviously, winning Houston, uh, grand champion, South Down, winning Fort Worth as well, grand and reserve here at San Angelo. So it takes a lot of work. But take me back to the beginning for folks that may be new to the show industry. There's so many little bitty things that need to be done at home and then once you get to the show as well. So. I guess let's first talk about goats, for instance. So let's talk about grinching. Of when the proper time to start grinching them, I guess, would be the question. And then once you get to the show, how you do that? Because there's a lot of different grinches uh, involved. And, and so somebody may see someone doing something and think I need to do that. That might not be the case. Well, that's very true. And, and we really look at each goat individually because there's not a set formula say a drench that's going to work for every circumstance. Um, at home we'll look at the condition of the goat. A lot's going to be determined by how much fat cover they have on them. Uh, some goats that are relatively thin will require a different type of drench than goats that are that are optimum or too fat. And um, all that starts at home. Um, we practice with drenches at home. Goats are difficult to drench because they're so such finicky eaters and, and um, just they're their um, taste of things is different than sheep and so we'll practice at home we'll use a dine or something that tastes good to them a lot of our drenches have um, have dextrose in them so it's sweet and so we practice at home trying to get these goats to take a gun and drench the whole deal with drenching is you want to be able you know we've, we want to put fluids in their body and so if they're fighting you and gagging and, and just fighting their drench gun then, then we aren't going to achieve what we need to um, so we practice at home, get them on a sweet type drench that has granulated dextrose or dine, uh, which tastes good to them, and, and so we can get them started on that. We look at the goat, if the goat's uh, got some fat cover to him, if he's a little softer, a little bloomier we call it, um, we'll go with a drench that's more like an electrolyte, um, amino acid type drench. A lot of those are your clear drenches or, or drenches that have a color to them. And um, that just helps firm things up. Um, to me, there's two categories of drenches. We've got our amino acid or electrolyte type drenches, and then we have our, what I call liquid feed, or our high energy, high fat drenches. Well, if we have a goat that's too fat, uh, we don't wanna go with a high fat drench. And so we're gonna go with the electrolyte or amino acid type drench. On the other hand, if we have goats that are real thin, or we've hauled them a long distance, or they just aren't taking the trip well, then we go with more of a liquid feed type drench, say an, you know, an Insure, uh, Show Shake, um, Gold Dust. There's a lot of drenches out there. Dining Water. Dining Water is a really good drench, a very complete uh, nutritional product. Let's talk about when the proper time is, because you know we've we've heard the term we want our goats at 12 o'clock, and so. Determining that, is that strictly by feel? Is that by look? Is that by the condition of their skin? Can you tell with a wrinkle in their skin if they're a little dry, if they're a little stale? We hear the judges talk about that, they're crackly on top. Let's talk about that. That, everything adds into it. Um, you know, we look at them, we handle them. Um, definitely the spine and, and your long dismus dorsi muscle, the fat cover on top 
you know, we put fat on from, from the bottom up. And so when they dehydrate, they de dehydrate from the top down or they stress. And so the first fat that we lose and the first moisture we lose is from the top, which is the most critical. And um, so we want to get drenches into them before we stress the animal. A lot of people wait till we get to the show and they're already, you know, it past a critical time and they want to bring them back. Well, let's try to stop that and not ever lose them. Uh, so we start drenching three or four days out. Some depends on the goat, how much they've been hauled. If your goat has never left the barn other than maybe going to validation, you probably need to start earlier and be more prepared. Uh, when animals get nervous, they urinate. And when they urinate excessively, that's when they dehydrate. And so we've got to, you know, fill them with fluids before we leave the house. We don't ever take anything off of water prior to leaving. Let's talk about one other aspect in the show barn because I know there's pros and cons to both sides of it, but let's talk about washing these goats. Once you, get, We see a lot of people at the show start washing and you hear the old term, they shook their top out, especially in the cold weather. Explain maybe some of the finer points on that. And that's that's kind of theory based. We've, we've been been in the goat business kind of since the, since the inception and, and um, you know, we at home, we've got a wash rack with hot water, and we wash that goat and shear him and get him ready to go, and that's the last time he's gonna see a wash rack, unless it's just super hot. And we see him sweating and just, you know, the temperatures are excessive, which at times in Texas, it can be, you know, 80 one day and 18 the next. But um, we try to keep the goats out of the wash rack. Um, you can you can watch a, uh, an exhibitor take a goat on a real cool cold morning and that goat gets wet and his tail goes down and his spine goes up and, and he's just, uh, you know, hurt himself in the long run. So we try to keep them out of the out of the wash rack. Goats are really clean animals and if they need cleaning, you've got the waterless shampoo that you can, and a chamois you can uh, clean them up with. Friends, when we get back, we're gonna continue our conversation with Mike Harper. Stay tuned. For maximum performance in the show ring, Luberson Livestock. For lifelong joint health, Luberson Livestock. For stock show animals and your beloved pet, Luberson Livestock. Luberson Livestock's oral supplement developed by Dr. Stephen Alday is safe and 100% all natural. Luberson Livestock's patented hyaluronic acid formula ensures the integrity of synovial fluid, the key component for protection and lubrication of all joints. Keep your livestock floating with Luberson Livestock. On this week's Sun Glow Spotlight, we'd like to shine the spotlight on the North family from Wilcottville, Indiana. Congratulations, North family. Well, welcome back to Stock Show Confidential. Before the break, we heard from Mike Harbor about how they prepare their goats for show day. Now let's hear from Mike on how they prepare their lambs for the winter circle. Mike, let's talk about the difference between drenching a lamb and drenching a goat because they're obviously, they're, they're different animals even though they're closely the same. We probably drench our, our lambs more. Uh, the trends in the show ring today, we're required, you know, we're taking a little more fat on sheep, a little softer touch than we used to 10 years ago, definitely. And so we may put more fluids in them, um, some of those softer drenches, uh, your, you know, your high fat drenches. Um, sheep, the telltale sign on them a lot of times is, uh, is their hide. We can look at a lamb and, you know, you pull the cover up over him and he's starting to wrinkle and you can tell we need to get some fluids in him. One thing that's really critical that people forget is water. Fresh, clean water. We bring our water from the house. Um, that way we don't have any taste differences, chlorination differences. And so, um, you know, you, you can see an inexperienced feeder or family and they're drenching away and they've forgotten to water. And so water's the utmost importance in sheep. Uh, as well as goats, but um, we do more water than anything. I, I like to haul my lambs just a little bit softer than what I'd like to see them go in the ring at. And that way you've got a little flexibility in there. We can go to, you know, go to the show with a lot of water and feed and then add our drench as needed. Um, if you've got one that's too soft, again, you go with like an amino acid, uh, high electrolyte type drench uh, to help firm them up some, maybe even a little propylene glycol. Um, 
Whereas if we're thin and maybe losing our loin edge, we'll go with a high fat, high calorie drench uh, to get those fat cells back. Let's also talk about some of the other things to get ready, especially on lambs. I, I saw a young lady stop and talk to you a moment ago asking some questions, and you were looking at its ears, you were looking at its legs about, you know, they get in these shavings, and it's really hard to get those shavings out. So let's talk about some of the little finer points that maybe they need to get prepared for before they hit the show ring. That's true. In today's trend, again, we, we go back to that because you follow trends. The leg wool is super important. Um, you know, bone size and leg wool and shag, they call it. Um, it's something that we protect a lot. We show, you know, a lot of south downs, and, and so they can get bored in the pen and start pulling wool, or uh, same with black faced sheep. So we try to protect it. We wrap our legs. Um, that way, it's easier when you get to the show. You can just trim that wrap off. You don't have shavings embedded in that wool, and you aren't pulling wool out. Um, watching the hide, and make sure, and we're keeping them hydrated, keep them cool when it's hot. Uh, warm when it's cold. Um, um, one thing in Texas we have a lot of weather fluctuations and we don't always keep our lambs warm enough to me at night. Uh, these these evenings chill down at night and these barns get cold and so I try to double blanket them, put a fleece under them. Um, cold I think is more detrimental to our show animals than hot in the sheep and goat ring. Mike, for new people coming into our industry Where's the best place to go for advice? To the breeders, to your county agent, uh, who, who can help you the most? I think go to experienced uh, families that have been showing, feeders that have been, been um, you know, up and down the road and, and showing. That's, that's the great thing about the livestock industry is, is people aren't afraid to, sh to share knowledge. Um, new people come in, they're like, oh, well, what's the secret? And there's not a secret. The secret's hard work and, and fine details and and um, the weaning is done at home and it's done you know Monday through Friday at the house and, and on Thanksgiving and Christmas and Sunday afternoons and and so that's where all the weaning's done right there but just ask a family that's been out there been up and down the road you know that's done it and they'll they'll be more than happy to share the information with you. Mike it's an honor to visit with you and, and share this stage with you and good luck in there later on today. Well thank you very much appreciate it. Stock Show Confidential is brought to you by the following sponsors. Sullivan Show Supply and Stock Show University. Sure Channel. Sun Glow Feeds. Five Star Four. WW Livestock System. EB Trailer. Luberson Livestock. And StockShowConfidential.com. This segment of Stock Show Confidential is brought to you by WW Livestock Systems, the leader in livestock handling equipment. with Trey and Shine Polster. And guys, it didn't quite work out the way you wanted it to today. Let's talk about what you would have done different in the show ring today, or maybe something that you saw. Was it the goat? Was it just not fitting the judge? Well, I don't think the judge was looking for what we had, and we just didn't have it all there. So what did you learn from today? I learned that, well, it doesn't really matter if you don't win or not, at least you tried your best, and that's all you can do. Trey, I know that you've been an ag teacher or educator in a public school system for 31 years. 31 years. And I tell you, that is an incredible feat. You have touched the lives of so many young people. If a young person is thinking about coming along maybe and being an ag teacher, what kind of advice would you give them? 
main thing is that they enjoy their job. I tell my kids all the time that I can honestly tell them I've never woke up hating to go to work. And I, I woke up not wanting to go to work because I was tired, but not hating it. As a matter of fact, this year I have three ex-students that are that became ag teachers this year, all from the same officer group. Well, and one of the interesting side notes of that is the producer of my show, Ron McWilliams, was in your ag class earlier, you know, in his early career. Yes, sir, and I've got lots of them just like him that I like. I love seeing them, hearing how their lives are going, and you know, I just I enjoy what I do because they most of the time they they become. Uh, you know, very uh, professional, and uh, they do well in life. All of the components that we go through in ag, whether it's public speaking or parliamentary procedure and some of those other things, it makes, makes a lasting impact on, on you for the rest of your life. Correct. The, the main thing is I've had students that came in as a freshman, and there's no way you get them up in front of an audience. By the time they're a senior, they may be one of our, one, you know, my FFA president and talking in front of 200 people. And it's all because of the leadership that they get and the opportunities they get to talk in front of people with parliament procedure and, like you said, leadership contests and other things like that. And so it's, it goes a long way. Well, I know one of the interesting things about yourself in being an ag teacher down there for that number of years, the same school, Arlington, Texas, but they're building you guys a brand new ag facility down there. When I started there it was, you know, just a little community between Fort Worth and Dallas and now it's humongous and we had, oh, we had places all over Arlington to keep animals and now we've lost all of them but like one or two. And so it'd be nice to have a facility for those kids to be able to keep their animals at and have a newer, newer facility for advanced animal science, horticulture, and all that good stuff. Well, that's one of the good things about being in a major city like that, uh, of keeping kids involved in agriculture. Correct. The, you know, they don't get that opportunity very often. We do, sometimes we do petting zoos, and these kids have never even seen a goat or a sheep or a calf or a horse or whatever, and, and you're amazed. You're like, really? Well, thanks for what you do for the youth of America, because it's guys like you that keep our industry going strong. Cheyenne, good luck down the road. We'll see you uh, someplace else, all right? Thank you. Well, friends, be sure and check out StockShowConfidential.com, our Breeders' Corner. We have the top lamb, goat, pig, and cattle breeders listed there. Check it out. And this week, we're gonna highlight some of the top breeders listed there. For the past five years, m and Show Goats has been working hard to combine the right genetics to get the top quality of breeding and weather stocks that they have today. For over a decade, Shannon Prescott has been involved in the boar goat industry. At m and Show Goats, they know that you have to put your trust in them to provide the highest quality. Let them provide your next champion. Visit them at m and if you'd like to be part of this exciting opportunity to showcase your breeding program or have an upcoming sale that you would like to promote, contact me at Terry at StockShowConfidential.com. Welcome back friends to Stock Show Confidential. Livestock shows are a great way for you children to learn responsibility and work ethic. But more importantly, it's a relationship forged in the barns that will build their true character. We ran into two young ladies that are the best of friends, and it shows in the barns. We're joined by Jordan and Autumn and girls. Y'all just come out of the barn over there just a moment ago showing goats, right? Yes, sir. Now, let's talk about how you got involved in the stock show. What made you want to do that? Um, my brother kind of inspired me when he started. I kind of thought, if he can do it, then I can try it. Now this is your second year to do that, right? Now Autumn, this is your first year. So how did it go in there today? Well, um, my goats need to kind of run a little bit better, so I'll try to run them a little bit more next year so they can do a little bit better. So you were a little upset whenever you came out of there earlier today, but Jordan kind of, y'all been best friends for a long time, so she helps you as well. What'd she tell you over there? What was, what was some of the coaching things that she told you? She said that first step into the arena, 
You always have to look at that judge and never take your eyes off. So, now, what made you go up a while ago? Because you could see that she was upset, and so you wanted to kind of coach her a little bit, but, you know, it takes a special person to do that. Um, well, her first one, since she was in class one, I was watching her, and when, right when she stepped in, she was, she was always looking at her goat, and the goat, uh, I mean, the judge was looking at her, and she needed to keep her head up because she kept looking at the goat, and I was kind of like, okay, before she goes into class three, I need to tell her this while class two's going. Autumn and Jaredin couldn't make it in the show ring without the support of their families. Jaredin attributes her knowledge to her brother as well as her parents. And they both know if you're gonna win, you better do your homework. There are a lot of good kids who have done this for many years and they you just have to know your competition. With the show wrapped up, Jaredin and Autumn will take home five memories from this year's stock show. Purple ribbons may not have been in the books for them this year, but look for this pair to compete for years to come. Good luck to both of y'all. It's been a pleasure to sit down with you. Thank you. Well, friends, as we close it out, from San Angelo, Texas, this has been an incredible goat show. They consider San Angelo kind of the goat capital of Texas. What a great committee they have here, and it's a tremendous honor to be able to come down and view such fine animals. Until next time, I'm Terry Jordan saying, here's hoping that we'll see you in the winter circle. I'm talking too much, let me get me. <laughs>